right, so uh, we're going to focus on 5.3, the tangent function. We talked about sine and cos uh, and what those graphs look like. They are very similar looking graphs, right? They are both sinusoidal type graphs. The tangent function is very different, and we're going to see very shortly um, why that tangent function looks quite a bit different. And uh, we're going to go back to the unit circle for that. But let's just, let's just take a look at the word tangent. Um, a tangent line is a line that touches a graph or a circle or something in just one point. And so the word tangent comes from the Latin word tangere, to touch. Okay, and uh, so there's a little bit of background about the, the word tangent. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to head to the uh, unit circle, and I've asked you to copy this graph into your notes. So uh, this is where we want to be, okay? So 5.3, the tangent function, we're going to use our unit circle, and what we're going to do is we're going to write down some of the coordinates for the tangent function uh, for the first um, first full revolution. Okay, so we're going to use degrees here. This, uh, this graph has degrees, so we'll use degrees for our... Uh, our angle. So, so a tan of zero degrees, okay? A tan of zero. Now, remember how we find tangent? Remember how tangent is defined? Anybody remember? Tangent of an angle is sine divided by cosine. Very good. And so when we look at each each angle measure, we simply look at the coordinates and we take the second coordinate and we divide it by the first one. And so for tan of zero, we'll be looking at sine, which is zero, divided by one. What's zero divided by one? It's zero, yep. And so at zero, maybe I'll use a red color here, we're gonna put a point there, okay? Zero, zero. All right, what about 45? Okay, let's move up to 45 here. And if we take the second coordinate divided by the first coordinate, well, those are the same, right? And they're both positive, so tan of 45 is going to be 1. Also, from our little special angle triangle, we should know that as well, just really quickly, right? 1, 1, root 2, and tangent is opposite divided by adjacent, so we know it's 1 over 1, okay? Another way you can tell that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to mark... At 45, which is this section right here, we're going to mark it at uh, 1. Okay. Now, tan of 90. What happens at tan of 90 over here? So we have 1 divided by 0. Okay. 1 divided by 0. So what is 1 divided by 0? Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. So we're talking about uh, basically infinity or undefined. And so what we're going to do at 90 degrees is we're going to draw this asymptote. It's called an asymptote. Have you, are you familiar with that term? We've talked about that before, right? So an asymptote. So that means that at that x value of 90 degrees, the tangent function is undefined. Okay? All right. So we'll, we'll keep going here. We might have to piece a little bit more together as we move through, but let's keep going. So tan of 135, if we look at tan of 135. Well, we have the same values again, but we're, one of them is negative. So that's going to be root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2, which should give us what? Negative 1. Awesome. So that's at 135, which would be here. So we'll go to negative 1. All right? Everybody with me so far? All right, so we'll, we'll keep going. 0 divided by negative 1 is still 0. So at 180, we'll plot a point at 0. And we'll keep moving through. 225. So here's 225. Again, same value, but they're also the same sign. So that value is positive 1. Okay? So you might be coming up, uh, you might be recognizing some sort of pattern here, and you probably will shortly after this next one. So 270, negative 1 divided by 0. All right? That's another undefined, that's another asymptote. So at 270, we're going to put an asymptote as well. Now, the positive and the negative don't really mean anything. So, you know what I mean? Like negative 1 over 0, positive 1 over 0. At this point, don't really mean much. But you might be able to see that there's some sort of pattern evolving. So, 315, again, that's going to be a negative 1 over here. So, we'll plot that as well at 315, negative 1. 
And at 360, what's your guess? Zero. Zero divided by one. Okay. And of course, this is what it looks like. So, so right now, that does not that that doesn't help us a lot, really. If you have those many points, that doesn't help us a lot. I am going to do one thing, though. Okay, I'm going to put negative 90 here, and I want you to do that as well, if you wouldn't mind. Negative 90 degrees would be over here, right? And so let's take a look at what negative 90 is. So that would be, here's 0, and we go back to here, negative 90. And what's this value here for tan? It is undefined again, okay? So we're going to... Um, or wait, ne no, sorry, ne yeah, negative 1 over 0, okay? So we're going to have uh, an asymptote there as well, okay? Okay, so um, I guess what we, what we should do here is negative 45 then too, okay? So negative 45 is also negative 1, let's just round that off by putting that there as well. That's what I was looking for. Sorry. Okay, everybody got it? So add this to your, your graph if you haven't already. Now, I'm going to fill in some blanks here. Let's fill in some blanks. Like, for example, um, how do you draw this graph? Is this a straight line here between, you know, these points right here like this? Is that going to be a straight line? Uh, no, it's not, right? But how do you know? Uh, is it going to be, you know, something like like this, uh, where it goes up here and then kind of comes down here like that and then back up like that. You know, how do you know? So let's fill in some more blanks here. What do we get uh, for a tangent of 30 here? Well, tangent of 30, okay, let's put some down here. Tangent of 30 is 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. That's the same as when you divide by a fraction. It's the same as flipping and multiplying, right? So that's the same as times 2 over root 3. Those 2's cancel out. You get 1 over root 3. So if we bring up our calculator and we evaluate as decimal, because it's going to be, you know, handier to figure out what that is as a decimal, 1 divided by the square root of 3 is going to be 0.577. Okay. So 30 degrees, then, is going to be right here, right? And 0.77, so here's 0.5, there's 0.75, point, um, excuse me, point, sorry, 0.577, not that's better. So it's going to be right about here, okay? So right in the middle, and it's going to be you know, right, about, right about there. Now, with the scale of this graph, I don't know if that helps us really a whole bunch, but what we see is that there seems to be some kind of continuity here, right? Now, is it a straight line? No, it's actually not a... It's not a straight line. But what it is, if you were to piece more of this together, it would sort of look like this, okay? It would sort of look like coming up here like this. A little bit of a curve going on there. And then from here, there's a little bit of a curve going on here. So let's kind of something like that. Okay, if you filled in more and more uh, values, this is stretched quite a bit. Number like the, the number one is quite high compared to 90 degrees here, right? So it kind of looks like this. And then, of course, down here, we could fill in similar um, uh, spots, and it would look like this again. So it kind of has this sort of shape there. And then from 0 up, it kind of it has a little bit of an upward concavity there as well. Okay? So this is what the, the tangent looks like, and, it, and it's definitely a repeated pattern, isn't it? Okay? So, so it kind of looks like that. <clears throat> and I extended this back to negative 90 so that you can kind of see between the asymptotes that you have this pattern here. From 0 to uh, 180, okay, we, you would have this portion. You have this portion right here. You'd have an asymptote. And then you'd have the bottom kind of portion. That's, that would be one, uh, one period, wouldn't it, from 0 to 180? Because after that, it repeats again. So there's a few things that we can learn about the tangent function, and that is is that it is a periodic function as well because it makes sense because that you get the same tangent values as you go around the unit circle. But what's the period length? That's different than sine and cos. What's the period length? I just kind of mentioned that. Did you pick that up? The period length for tan is what? 
Okay, the period length for 10 uh, is going to be, yeah, it's going to be 0 to 180 or negative 90 to 90, right? And then it repeats. So it is 180 degrees or pi radians. Okay, so period length for 10 is pi. Remember for sine and cosine it was 2 pi. So that's, that's one thing that we find different. And the period is calculated, of course, between you know corresponding points, so there and there, uh, of the repetitions. Or you can consider between the asymptotes, right? It's always 90 degrees there. OK. Um, what else do we know about, uh, about tangent there? Look at this graph here. And of course, if you want, you could continue uh, continue this on, right? This kind of goes up like this as well. We have an asymptote there, so it repeats forever and ever. Um, what do we know about 10? Any other observations that you make here? And those continue down and continue up. What's the maximum point for a tan graph? Infinity. Okay, so really there is, there's n yeah, you could say infinity, but it's not really a, a, a discrete, no, it's not really a definite number. So what we'll say is that there is no maximum, and there's actually no minimum as well. So no max, maximum, oops, or minimum uh, uh, for a tan graph. Okay, so for y equals tan theta. So the period length is different. The fact that there's no minimum or maximum is different. Um, we should mention those vertical asymptotes, right? So there are vertical asymptotes. Okay, at, where do they look? It's at pi, uh, at pi over 2, right? And 3 pi over 2, right? And 5 pi over 2. So it repeated not. So how could we, how could we write that? Multiples of, basically multiples of pi over two, right? So uh, let's write that down. Multiples of pi over two, or pi over two plus uh, n times. Uh, Well, n times pi yeah, because, because we're talking about 180 degrees, right, between them. So starting at pi over 2 plus pi times n. Yeah, that's right. Where, of course, n is um, element of integers. Okay, so plus... You can multiply it basically this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, so on. All right. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let, for the rest of our list here, let's pop over to the textbook. So this is in your textbook. Some of you might have found it already. But let's go to the key ideas here. Whoops. Oh Had it, then I lost it. Here's your assignment. Okay, so key ideas right here. And we should have some of this stuff already. So periods pi, no maximum min values. Uh, oh, the range, okay. Let's talk about the range. Well, because if there's no maximum or minimum values, the range is y is an element of all real numbers. Okay, so let's put that in our notes. The range, okay y is an element of all real numbers. We better talk about the domain as well, right? So, the domain. Well, all values of x are possible except for where these asymptotes are, right? That means that that x value is undefined at that point. So, what do they say about the domain here? Okay, so they kind of let you cheat a little bit instead of stating the domain, which would be, whoops, which would be very, very difficult, right? Um, 
to state all those little spots where the domain is, is possible, they'll let you, and I'll let you too, just say that X cannot be uh, on these multiples of, of uh, well, actually, they're odd multiples of pi over 2. I should state that. So this right here. So the domain X cannot be equal to um, where the asymptotes are that we mentioned before. Okay, so we'll put that in our notes as well. So x cannot equal uh, the pi over 2 plus uh, pi multiples of that. So, and this is where your vertical asymptotes are, right? Where vertical asymptotes are. Is this, uh, this, this being described there. So every other place other than where there's a vertical asymptote. <clears throat> All right, so where do the x-intercepts and y-intercepts, what, what can we say about those? Well, the y-intercepts for a regular, and this is just for tan, right? Once you apply your translations, stretches, phase shifts, all that sort of stuff, once you apply those, that's going to change, right? But for the y equals tan graph, notice that the uh, y-intercept is 0, and x-intercepts occur every multiple of pi. So y-intercept is 0, x-intercepts are every multiple of pi. So we'll write that down in our notes as well. Y-intercept is uh, 0, 0. X-intercepts at um, 0 plus any multiple of pi. zero plus any multiple of pi. And of course we go back to ours here. There's zero, you add pi, you get another intercept, you add pi, you get another intercept, and so on, right? Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and let you guys get some graphing calculators out because I'd like to apply some transformations here to um, uh, to this tan so you can kind of see how that goes. So go ahead and take a moment here and grab a graphic calculator. So if you, uh, yeah, if you notice in your text there that um, in this section, and I don't, I don't really think that transformations of tan is a, uh, a real uh, focus in your textbook here. So, and, um, but anyways, I, I, I feel like uh, we do need to explore this, of course. So um, they're a little bit harder to nail down, actually, the, uh, you know, the transformations of what happens, but I think it's going to be important for us to take a peek. So. Let's put in uh, tan of x, of course. Let's do that first. And of course, I need to delete all the rest of this stuff. So we do, let's say, do a tan of x, and I'm going to adjust my zoom. The asymptotes look a little bit funny on your graphing calculator, right? Um, they, they will. They'll kind of look like this vertical line there. That's not part of the graph, but that's kind of the, the calculators. It's trying to say that, hey, there's, a, um, there's an asymptote there. All right? So, if we take a look at, why don't we just kind of zoom in a little bit here, or let's, well, we could try zooming in, all right? You do have a zoom in function if you're ever stuck. You can just zoom in and then hit enter, and it kind of zooms in. You, you can't really control how much it zooms in, but this is perfect. This is really what I want to see, so. All right, so what we know is that um, a quarter of the way through the, uh, the period, and so that would, are we in, let's see, are we in radians or degrees? Okay, I'm in radians here. All right, let's go to degrees. Oops, let you guys go over to degrees there. Let's put degrees in. And now that's going to change our graph quite a bit. <laughs> so we'll fix that. Okay, so because we've changed to degrees here, we have to change our x-axis here. Um, we want to see negative 90 for sure because it's got the asymptote and positive 90. So I just adjusted my windows there. And this is what the graph then should look like. <clears throat> So, um, what did we say back here? We said that tan of 45 it should be 1, right? So 45 degrees up there should be at exactly 1. Let's just confirm that, of course, with our calculator. So we'll do second function, trace, which gets us the calculate menu, and we're going to go number 1, or just enter for value. And so let's put in 45, and just double check to make sure that everything we've done is correct so far. So at 45 degrees, we do, in fact, have a y value of 1. Everyone see that? Okay. 
All right, so what do you think will happen? Let's go back to this function here. What do you think will happen if I have an a value of 2? So uh, I'm going to put 2 tan x in there. Before you graph it, what do you think is going to happen? That should be a what? A is what? Vertical stretch, okay? So all of the y values that would normally be on a tan of x graph should be double, right, for the 2 tan. So a vertical stretch. So let's see what happens. There's our original tan, and look at this, okay? It looks like this graph has been stretched vertically. So let's just check that. Second function trace to the calculate menu. Let's do enter. And I'm going to put 45 in again. And of course, at 45 degrees, I have y equals 1. Let's check the other graph. Hit the cursor up, and it's going to pop over to this one. And of course, look at that, y equals 2. So when you uh, vertically stretch a tan, it kind of makes sense, I guess, you're going to kind of stretch it up so it looks kind of more like this, I guess. You know, it's going to be almost flatter, right? And so even, let's just, uh, uh, let me just display this down here for you. Let's, let's just take a peek here. So, okay. So let's say we have a regular tan graph that kind of looks like this. And it, and it kind of, you know, if the scale is right, there's quite a, uh, there's quite a curve there. And so if we multiply by 2, then this negative 1, let's say, is going to go to negative 2. This positive 1 is going to go to positive 2. And so we end up having this stretch like this, right? So if we had y equals 5, well, the 1 here that became a 2 is now the 1 is going to become a 5. So it's going to be quite the stretch. This is going to be almost, almost a straight-looking line, right? kind of go like this. What do you think would happen if I had an A value of, you know, um, 0.5? What should happen then? Well, maybe we'll put this in red here. What should happen then? I'm going to squish it down, right? So this 1 will go to 1 half. This 1 will go to 1 half. We still have an asymptote here, okay? An asymptote here. But what's going to happen is it's going to, the graph is going to be closer to the asymptote here, and then it's going to come and go through this point, and then through, still through zero, so it's going to flatten out a bit. Okay? It looks something like that. Does that make sense? Any questions there? And of course you can confirm all this on your calculator. That'd be great. Let's, let's maybe do that one more time. So 0.5 tan of x. 0.5 tan of x, and here it comes. See that? All right, what do you suppose will happen if we adjust the b value? So what if I did y equals tan uh, of 2x? What's going to happen there, do you think? What should happen to the period length if I have a b value of 2? Because the period length for tan is pi, remember? So what do you, what's your guess? Pi over 2? Okay, is that what happened with sine and cos? We divided by b, right? So that means we, it, we're looking for it to maybe be squished up a little bit horizontally, right? So let's, why don't we test that? You might want to get rid of some of this stuff here. But if I try tan of 2x, let's see what happens. So here's the tan of x coming. And look at that. So the period has come in like this, okay? So it's it's actually instead of being, um, you know, from negative 90 to positive 90, it's now from negative 45 to positive 45. So the period length has indeed uh, been cut in half. All right, so here we are in handy dandy Desmos here, and uh, I've got the graph uh, lit up here. I've got actually two graphs lit up, and they're both the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter the B value here, and you're going to be able to see what happens to uh, the period length, okay? So as I move this slider, move B, as it increases, that's what happens to the period length. So it obviously kind of squishes up, right? It squishes up horizontally. If I play that, you can kind of see how it squishes up, and then as it gets less than zero, whoa, going into the negative there. Boy, let's slow that down here. Okay, so 
obviously getting very high. What happens? Okay, let's. So it's coming down there now. And look at what happens when it comes close to zero. Okay, so we're coming up to one. And then when it gets to zero, and then goes into the negatives, watch what happens. Look at that. Flips around. So does that, oh, that's pretty cool. Does that, does that make sense? Is that consistent with what we know of transformations in general? Like y of f of x? So if that b value is negative, what should happen there? That is a, a flip about the what? About the x-axis or about the y-axis? About the y-axis. So does this look like it's a reflection about the y-axis there? Yeah, if this was exactly negative 1, then that would be an exact uh, reflection about this y-axis. Okay? Okay, so let's do uh, let's do an A here, and I'll make that a positive one. Okay, so what happens if the A moves? Okay, so here we go. Let's play this one, and there's our A going up to ten, back down, right? So at about forty-five degrees here, that's at one, and then as it comes down, boom, and then it flips over. So this, even though it's tough to tell, this is a reflection about the x-axis, right, at negative 1. Now, okay, so a of negative 1 and, and b of negative 1 looks pretty much the same, right? That's kind of cool. They change differently, of course, but when you have a negative 1 and b of negative 1, you have to actually have the same graph. Okay, any questions so far? Um, okay, so let's do minus uh, c here. Thank you, I'll add a slider for that. And plus d. Okay. <clears throat> So if we move C, um, that should move the graph one way or the other to the left, right? Uh, oh, yeah. See, it's moving over there. It's just the, that the X scale is so large. See, it's moving left and right. And then the A, I'm sorry, the D over here should move it up down. See that? Now, it looks like it's kind of going on the angle there, but it's actually just moving straight up and straight down. Okay, and if we play all these, we'll get quite the um, synchronized action going there. Okay, look at that. Let's speed this one up. Oh, look at that. Like, we could put this to music. <laughs> Maybe not your music, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> nice try. Okay, any questions on about tan and how the transformations of tan work? Okay, so these this data about tan here is pretty important, okay, knowing about the intercepts, domain and range, um, some characteristics here of tan. And uh, yeah, if we head back to your to your textbook here, then that's uh, some good key ideas there for you to know. Okay, so there's a bit of summary and I'll give you your assignment here soon.